Hello, welcome to this session on the life cycle of a star. My goal is very much in this video at least to describe the evolution of a typical star from the life in the main sequence to its eventual demise. So when I talk about a typical star, I'm talking about a star similar to the mass of our own sun. Now, the one of the things you're going to have to recognize here is that uh, the mass of a star really has a key indicator about its life cycle, about how it's born and how it's seen and how it dies. So you need to be very, very aware of some of the cutoff points between one pathway and another pathway, dependent on the mass. So that's something to think about. So first of all, how old do you think our sun is? And when do you think our sun will die? Okay. You may know this, you may not know this. Our sun is about 4.5 billion years old. It's actually about, about, give or take a billion years, uh, about halfway through its life. So there's about 5.5 billion more years of typical star life ahead of it. Now, all of this, as I said, is dependent on the mass. I mentioned this before, but life in the main sequence, the timeline, is very much dependent on the original mass of the star. If the mass of the star is very small, so we've got one tenth of the solar mass, then what we find is that it's much less bright, but also it tends to have a much longer lifetime on the main sequence. Whilst we use the example of a star which is 10 times the mass of our sun, it bright, shines much, much, much brighter, up to 10,000 times brighter, yet the lifetime of the span is only about 20 times 10 to the 6 years. So the more massive a star is, the brighter it shines, but the shorter its life. Undoubtedly, there's an analogy towards rock stars today there. So let's now think about uh, stars which are really, really small. So a star which has a mass of under 0 0.4, that of our sun, well, eventually the hydrogen runs out. And then once the hydrogen runs out, gravity causes the star to collapse. Uh, some more, so becoming a dwarf, nothing else really happens, there's no further ignition, and we have this warm ball which cools down for eternity. It's a white dwarf, and eventually that remnant heat goes away, and finally becoming a dark brown dwarf. So that's for really small stars. Now, for stars which are a bit bigger, with masses from 0 0.4 to about eight times that of our sun. As the star runs out, it swells, so increasing its luminosity, becoming what's known as a red giant. Now, how this happens is we have the burn-up of hydrogen at the center. That means there's a collapse towards the center, uh, so that becomes hotter than before. This, in turn, increases the fusion rate in the shells outside, and that causes them to expand. But this expansion at the same time spreads the heat out and causes the surface to cool. So the star expands greatly, and the red and luminosity increases because the air is even uh, more increased, even though it's cooler. And this is what's going to happen to our sun at some stage. So our sun is going to become a red giant, and it's going to, uh, when it does this, the red giant process is going to envelop planet Earth. And Mars is going to be as close to the surface as Mercury is to our sun at this moment in time. So, as you can see, what we have with our sun, we have our core continues to heat to 10 to the 8, uh, where a triple alpha process takes place. And so that's known as a helium flash. Okay. So helium is produced. Uh, it loses a lot of mass because of a, a weak gravity at the edge. So it's often uh, outer shells become often quite unstable due to the contractions and variability. And after the helium burns, there's not enough mass to start anything more. So after that, it becomes a red giant and then just slowly contracts and collapses uh, to become a white dwarf. 
it does have a main sequence path. So for the main sequence, it goes up towards being a red giant and then cools back down and drops down to being a white dwarf. So there's a passageway there. And these white dwarfs, so when the hydrogen runs out, a lot of the elements, elements may be burnt, nucleosynthesis here, but at carbon, no matter what, there's no more fusion can take place. That's the end of that. So the outer shell is ejected as a planetary nebulae. So earlier on, remember I said that those outer shells can be quite unstable. So often they can be ejected, and we can see this in a, the image which I'm showing here. And the remnant, the core, is becomes the white dwarf. Okay. Now, note, a white dwarf cannot have a mass that is greater than 1.4 times the mass of the sun, otherwise it becomes a neutron star. And this limit is known as the Chandrasekhar limit. Okay. And we'll explain what a neutron star is later on. What we're saying here is that uh, even a star which has a, a mass eight times that of our sun, it loses a lot of mass uh, due to ejecting uh, the outer shells, and that core remnant tends to not be very big. Okay, and I'm going to talk about what a neutron star is in another video as it happens, but just jot down that there is a distinction there. So, if we think of this in a diagram. Uh, we have a, a nebula, a cloud of some sort, and that collapses due to gravity. And if there's enough mass there, if it's too small, uh, we have failed stars. It will form a star like our sun. This will expand to form a red giant. The outer layers will drift away to leave a dense white dwarf. That's the story of uh, stars like our sun. Now, if we tell this story by looking at the motion around the main sequence, oh, let me just go back to that, what we can see here is that it's on the main sequence and it'll expand as a red giant and then it will just cool down and drop to being a white dwarf eventually. Okay. So that's the, the HR diagram story of a star much like ours. So past exam questions, it says our sun is on the main sequence, outline its past and expected life story starting from when it first appeared on the main sequence. You may be awarded mark for clarity of your answer. So it's basically, can you clearly tell the story of our star providing as much detail as possible? Take a moment, try and jot down what you can remember, what have we spoken about? And the answer would be... Uh, it gains some mass from the cloud collapse after the hydrogen ignition. So that means that just as the star formed, there may have been a little bit more mass falling onto it. It stays on the main sequence for a long time. As we mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be probably about, about 10 billion years. Uh, then it forms a red giant. Uh, with a red giant, the outer layer is lost as a planetary nebulae leaving the core remnant behind and that it becomes a white dwarf. So that would be the story of a star much like ours. And as I've said before, a lot of the astrophysics, when we're telling stories, there's sometimes a mark for the quality of the written communication. Uh, a final note here, uh, we have what's known as the lines of constant radius. And what we can see here is that we find if we go across the main sequence there's these lines and these lines really describe stars of a, a similar radius okay. so we can see here that even though there's some stars which may have a, a potentially could have a greater luminosity they may have a similar radius as our sun because they a little bit more tightly bound so it's another way to add annotation to your HR diagram.